Stephen, one of the great critiques, of course, of all religion is that they're all so different. And if you talk to proponents of any of the great religions, you generally find two different camps. One that are very uh, particular, that generally the majority, people who say, you know, we should be nice to other people, but we're the only true religion. And those who say that, you know, we're the religion, but, but give uh, credence to other religions that they may be approaching the, the same ultimate reality, whatever the religion is. So uh, in general, the Christian religion uh, is, uh, is more particular than universal in terms of its history and even the people that I've talked to, whatever sample that, that is. How, how do you view that? Are you, are you a, as a Christian believer, are you a universalist or a particularist? Well, I, I don't know that I particularly like being put into either of those categories. But I, I do think, I mean, my own view in the, in the question of other religions is uh, I'm committed to the idea that not all religions are alike or they don't all say the same thing. I think that's just empirically false. And if they disagree, obviously they can't all be right. <laughs> the law of logic, laws of logic make that necessary. So it's certainly possible that, that some religions are truer or better than others, and maybe one is better than all the others. Uh, that doesn't mean that the other religions don't have truths uh, and that their believers, uh, that, that their adherents, don't in some way try to uh, worship God or, or serve, serve God. No, of course, I think everybody would accept that. Everybody, yeah. you know, believe, believe that there's some common denominator that is yeah. general, that has some more moral peace, it has some transcendent peace, there's something beyond the physical yeah. world that, you know, and different people uh, call it different things, uh, you know, the ground of being, the real, or, but, but others would say that when you get down that far to get a common denominator for all the religions, you've basically eviscerated any content and, and God or anything else becomes vacuous. Well, certainly if you look for a common denominator, it's true, but, but here's a question, and I, I mean, I, I know there's been a controversy over this idea of do, do Muslims and Jews and uh, so I say theistic Hindus, do they all worship the same God? Well, there's different ways one could ask that question. If you mean, do they all have the same beliefs about God? The answer is obviously no, they don't. They don't have the same beliefs. But when they pray, are they addressing ontologically the same being? And here, I think we have to ask uh, semantic questions. How does reference work? I mean, how, when we use a word, how do we make that word refer to mm -hmm, something? Mm -hmm. And I think it's an interesting, I'm, I'm not an expert in philosophy of language, so I'm sort of going outside my expertise here, but as I understand it, and certainly it seems obviously correct in daily life, we don't all have to agree about the properties of something in order to refer to the same object. In fact, we couldn't disagree about an object if, you know, when we have a disagreement about the nature of something, we have to both be referring to the same something in order to have the disagreement. So even for religions to disagree, they have to be talking about the same object, I think, mm -hmm. on their view. And, and, and it's, it's obvious to me that if you think that there's only one God, so if my Muslim uh, friends say, we worship a being that we call Allah who is the creator of heaven and earth, and he's the only God. And has 99 names. Whatever his names are. I would have to say, they may have beliefs about God that I don't like, but they do believe in God, and when they pray, they are addressing God. That, that's the one they're referring to. Okay, so, so, so that, that I can follow along that line. The problem is, is that when you get into the Christian religion, it makes some very aggressive particularist claims that you know, yeah. Jesus is, I, I am the way and only through me. I'm sure I'm getting that quote somewhat wrong, but yeah. you know, if, if you're gonna go, you're gonna go that way. And some people say, well, other religions, if they're doing well, they're really going through Jesus, even though they don't know it, then maybe never heard of right. Jesus, they don't like it. They're really doing In that. Inclusivists, they're called. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. and, and, and that sounds, uh, if I remember another religion, that sounds pretty condescending. Now, I prefer, if, you know, rather than that than be excluded, I'd rather be included than excluded, but I'd feel like yeah. I was being... Uh, 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 well, if you think that something is true, uh, ultimately you have to say what you think is true. Uh, and uh, of course, and, and we've, we've 
in our culture, it's increasingly the case, and sometimes it's hard to get a discussion going in class because people think that if you disagree with them, you've insulted them. <laughs> but I always tell my students, if I argue with them, I respect you uh, because I respect you enough to disagree with you and take you seriously. Mm -hmm. And I think, in fact, uh, if I disagree with uh, a Muslim or a Hindu about something we might say about God, of course, first of all, I want to have a certain humility. I want to say, I'm a fallible, finite human being. I could be wrong about this. Uh, one, one of my friends says he's sure that 20% of his theology is wrong. He just doesn't no know which 20% <laughs> it is. Yeah, so that's probably right. But nevertheless, uh, what I believe to be true after having thought about things and trying to be as honest as I can be, I have to, I have to be honest and, and say what I think. And, if, and, I, and I would try to, to convey the idea that I may respect someone uh, that I disagree with, not only not just tolerate them, but genuinely respect them and, and understand that they have a different view. And I think the Christian tradition has room, and this may sound condescending, but one of my favorite stories is a children's story. I, I love the Narnia books that C.S. Lewis did. And the very last one, The Last Battle, there's this young warrior, uh, his name is Emeth, which is the Hebrew word for truth. Mm, and he's been serving Tash, who's the false sort of mm -hmm. god, all his life, but he dies and he meets Aslan, the great lion, who's the true, the true God. And he thinks, oh, I'm in trouble now. But Aslan welcomes him and says, you've really been serving me all along. You just didn't know it. <laughs> so I, I think that's a lovely story. And it fits with, Soren Kierkegaard has this idea. Uh, he tells in one of his books, he says, imagine a Christian who in the middle of the cathedral with the ideas of God, they're all true, but he, he prays in a, in a hypocritical false spirit. And then imagine a pagan who's worshiping an idol, but with all the inner passion of infinity. Kierkegaard says, there's more truth in the life of that pagan than there is in the life of the Christian. And I agree with him about that. 